What's up, YouTube? Knight's Edge here again. Got a really super special, un uh, <laughs> not unboxing, review video for you. Unbox this on the live stream, courtesy of Mr. Eddie. Uh, thank you, Mr. Eddie, so much for letting me borrow this really super awesome knife that I would probably never had the chance to get my hands on otherwise. Uh, really, really nice of people like him to, to let me, you know, loan me knives that can, you know, I can review on the channel and stuff and use for content. Really appreciate it, man. Uh, if y'all want to check Mr. Eddie out, go on his Instagram, Mr. Eddie underscore 411. He makes some really cool custom fixed blades and has an awesome knife collection. And also check him out on YouTube. Um, he'll be linked down below for sure. Definitely big props to him. So this one, I think this is like a drywall knife that he got from Home Depot. Maybe. I don't know. This is, uh, man, I forget the freaking brand name of this one. What is this? This is, uh, uh, I think he got it out of Walmart, maybe, in the sportsman's section. It was, I don't know, it was probably like lower tier, lower end of stuff. I don't know. Uh, let me see if I can find the box here. Oh, there it is. Oz Machine Company Roosevelt. <laughs> if you guys know me, you know I'm a smart ass. That is what that was, because this is a premium, 100% awesome, American-made, small batch, Fully homemade in the USA knife. This is the, uh, I figure I'm start trying to show some of the boxes and containers that these things come in, but it also gives you the correct information. Uh, you know, that way I don't screw it up. I probably still will. Uh, but if you look at that, radial frag milling, all titanium construction. There's the maker signature, uh, the model number, knife number, 3185, born on date April, April the 8th, 24. Oz Machine Company Roosevelt 63 to 64 HRC Magna Cup Blade. That is awesome. You know, and uh, awesome container too. So, yeah, this is a really special one. This is a full, um, this is one of the nicest knives you can get your hands on. I mean, if, if you've been in the knife community for any amount of time um, and you're familiar with customs, mid techs, high end production, um, you know, the lines kind of blur with all that stuff. Uh, I was talking to Mr. Eddie about that actually, you know, it's one of the things I've talked to him on the phone about before, but, uh, you know, mid, where does mid tech end and custom begin? Where does production end and mid tech begin? You know, these are totally in house. The guy makes everything now to the screws. Uh, you know, they, obviously, I mean, I guess they use some CNC machines for the, the handles and stuff, but I mean, everything is 100% made in house and they, they don't outsource anything and these are small batch small batch american made knives some awesome knives some of the best knives on the planet that you'll be able to get your hands on these are right up there with your shiragorovs these are right up there with your hermans these are right up there with you know grimsmo uh, you know all, uh, awesome knives of that nature so anyway, I'm going to treat it like a reg regular review, um, although I haven't really pried up too many bricks with this thing, you know, haven't cut too many sheets of drywall with it as much as I like to mess with Mr. Eddie. I have been treating this thing with kid gloves. So I'm going to treat it like a regular Knight's Edge knife review. If you go from the tip of the blade all the way to the butt of the handle, you're looking at 7 inches. If you look at the blade length, you're looking right at 3 and an eighth there cutting edge on it you're looking just a hair under three inches maybe two and 15 sixteenths or so on the curve which is excellent uh blade to handle ratios by the way so let's go ahead turn the calibers on zero them out thickest part of the spine you're looking at a hundred and nineteen thousandths right at it all right on the belly right there on the edge you're looking at twenty one thousandths really nice grind on this and handle thickness 0 0.40 rather on the thin side you know but i mean not you know like most knives it's kind of in that range but it is you know super thin um very very ergonomic very grippy you know really sweet ergonomics we'll talk more about that in just a second let's go ahead and do size comparisons we'll put some of the uh more uh peasant knives out of my collection next to this amazing custom Smith, whatever you want to call it. What is it called? Y'all let me know in the comments. I mean, y'all are the ones watching, right? Is it mid tech? Is it custom? I don't know. I would say uh, it's more, it's definitely more than production, I would say. All right, so uh, smaller overall than both of these, right? Cutting edge, you definitely, you got more cutting edge than 
but definitely smaller in overall length than both uh, the 8010 and the 8020.5. You got your Ontario Nice Rat Model 1 and your Ontario Nice Rat Model 2. So uh, a little bit shorter than the Rat 2. Let's see, still more sharp and edge length, man. Blade to handle's awesome on this one again, you know. Last but not least, Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and your Spyderco Air 3. All right, so that's what it looks like up next to that. Shorter than the pair of three, but again, more cutting edge. And let's see, well, I got it here. Let's go ahead and do it. Blau Rock Blades. How about that? All right. That is probably what, I don't know, Mr. Eddie, about $1,600, $1,700 worth of knives, maybe more than that, sitting on the table. Uh, maybe close to two grand, I don't know. Some really nice knives right there, but this Blau Rock Blades. Yeah, a little more cutting edge than the Roosevelt, not too much. Very, very similar, in my opinion, in the ergonomics department, being as how you can lock in. Like, as soon as you grab this thing, you are locked in. You know, there's no doubt on how to grab this knife. There's no need, and I can't believe I'm saying this, for a choke-up spot on this knife. You know, to me, I mean, you could grab it all silly and stuff back here if you want. And yeah, that's not really very comfortable. But if you grab this knife like it's meant to be grabbed, there's no need for anything else. You know, the Blau Rock does have the advantage of if you want to choke up, you can put your finger on that flat and still be fairly comfortable. But both of them, as soon as you grab them, you know how they're meant to be held, you know, without a doubt. They both feel very much so like they're made for your hand whenever you grab them. Very nice knives. All right, way off on a tangent here. So we did size comparisons. We did length. Uh, we did the calibers. Let's go ahead and do weight. So weight-wise, man, this thing is super light. You're looking at just over three inches. All right, there you go. Blade to handle or uh, cutting edge to uh, weight, ounce to inch. Ugh, I can't even think right ounce and inch ratio is perfect you know actually under so that is crazy you know that's really awesome they did really good on this one for sure 100 percent. there's a reason why this knife is a craze right now and i know it seems like the last couple of years anybody talking about anything with high-end knives um has talked about the roosevelt they are not full of shit i mean this is an awesome knife you know there's there's no two ways about it Pocket clip works great. Not a deep carry, but a pretty deep carry, right? I mean, if that makes any sense. You got a little bit peeking out right there, but uh, yeah, it carries pretty well. Uh, pocket clip's well secured. Definitely, you know, not a hot spot at all. You know, I'm not feeling anything off of that pocket clip when I'm gripping that knife. Let's go ahead and do hardware check. If you want to take your Roosevelt apart, it's a T8 right there. The T8, that's a T8, T8, T8. Yeah, so T8 all the way around, you know, that's awesome. If you want to take it apart, I don't know if it's a captive pivot or I don't know if it, it, it's not a captive pivot. I don't know if it's a D-shaped pivot barrel in there or not. But, uh, yeah. The detent on this is actually fairly shy, all right? So whenever I push this in right there is when it's hitting that detent ball, all right? So it's early, which is good. I like that. No issue there. I love the sound this thing makes, man. When you flick it open, it, you know, and then it falls shut. For such a light knife and a small blade, having that fall shut action is crazy. Really crazy. It's got really nice jumping up top right there that helps out a lot. Uh, I wear a large size glove average size hands I'd say you know and that that nails it perfect for me really um, the titanium it feels really nice it feels ultra premium you know um, I mean I know it looks ultra premium of course I love that milling pattern they got everything about this to me is just perfect you know there's no issues with with this knife that I have found other than price and availability but uh, you know like I said earlier these are a very small batch 
in-house made, all made in the USA, small batch production knives, you know, and that's very, very excellent quality, you know, aside from just the materials. I mean, you can get Magna Cut titanium, you know, for 200 bucks or even less than that, you know, in a production knife, uh, and made in the USA too, right? But, uh, well, probably made in the USA for 300 or so you can definitely get that, but, uh, yeah, that with this quality, you're not gonna find you're not gonna find this quality really in a, a price point that's too much less than this. You know, I mean, yeah, it is kind of steep. I think these are run around eight fifty or so, something like that. You know, I would say you know maybe I mean I've handled other knives that are comparable to it, that are pretty comparable to it. That are, you know you could say around seven fifty they do push the price a little bit. But I mean they. You know, they're calling the shots on this one because this is an in-demand awesome product. You know, it's once you get to this level, it's, uh, you know, you're going to pay what they want. And um, their craftsmen are paid very well, which is an awesome thing, right? But, uh, yeah, that is it, man. You can see that beautiful anodizing on the hardware. Looks really nice. Um, the clip, you know, as there's a screw in there. So that's that's pretty awesome, you know. I mean, I have not found a flaw with this knife. Really nice backspacer. All the all the corners and edges are perfectly well rounded, and everything is amazing with this knife. So that's pretty much it, guys. Oz Machine Company, Roosevelt. Um, true Grail of Grails, really. Uh, I can't think of anything else to say about it. Uh, everything's nice man. everything is super nice about it i would love to be able to do some cut testing with this but there's no way in hell i'm gonna do that even if mr eddie told me to you know it's not my knife i'm not gonna do that with this this is a very very functional very well made cutting tool i'll, get, I'll cut a piece of paper with it check this out all right so if you have any doubt about if this thing is a functional cutting tool or not you know, it, it will, it will slice, it will kill, you know, so definitely an awesome knife, um, a one of a kind knife for sure. They're all one of a kind knives, beautiful knives. Um, I think I mentioned that I mentioned the pocket clip. Yeah. Well-rounded all that. Um, everything about it, you know, everything about this is perfect to me as far as a knife goes. So, would really love and aspire to own one someday, you know, if I get in that position, that would be awesome, you know, and until then, I really appreciate Mr. Eddie for letting me borrow it, and I appreciate all you guys for watching me ramble about a knife that's well out of my means, and well above my, uh, you know, uh, class range, so, so, uh, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Hit the like button if you like the content. Hit subscribe if you want more of it. You want to listen to me ramble on and on about knives. Uh, come to the live streams. They're usually Saturday mornings. Uh, 9.30 a.m. Saturday morning. Uh, this week, not going to be having one due to unforeseen work circumstances. So hopefully I'll be resuming next week on the live stream. Uh, but yeah, I've... Appreciate all the support, all my Patreons, my channel members, everybody that's helped me out. Y'all are awesome. This community is awesome. And uh, until next time, y'all stay sharp.